what you are listening to is a magnetic tape recording device developed first by man as a better memory than his own. However, it has now become something more. This particular machine is the fine example of the progress of magnetic recording machines to date. The uses of the tape recorder are many and varied, and so a part of everyday life that they are seldom specifically called to mind. We have described it as an easy memory of yesterday. Since the That's just a little tease to what we're going to talk about today, the Criterion 1000 tape recorder from Lafayette Radio Electronics, 1965. I think it'd be fun before we got too far into this if we didn't look at the original Lafayette radio catalog from late 64, early 65 that introduced this. The professional four track stereo self contained tape recorder featuring magnificent teak cabinetry engineered to record FM stereo. $199.50. I think that there was a 1000B that didn't have the 1 and 7 eighths inch recording option and that was $10 less. Um, some of the specifications here you can pause your YouTube player and read those. One that was kind of important for me was this was uh, 43 pounds. And I saw this as an estate sale and I got my hands on it first. I wasn't sure if I was going to buy it because there was no power cord. I didn't know if it worked. It was expensive for me for an option I buy at an estate sale. They wanted $30 for it. And I didn't know if I wanted it or not. But I could feel two other guys who I always see at these estate sales standing behind me breathing on my neck just waiting for me to take my hands off of it. So I had to call a guy from the estate sale and ask him to put a sold sticker on there while I went and got my car and drove it around. Mine did not come with these two microphones, unfortunately. I guess you would have to maybe separate these in a room if you wanted to maybe record your child's piano playing or something like that. Well, let's get back to the recorder. Beautiful teak cabinetry wood. Speakers on either side. We'll look at those in a minute. Nice finish. A few flaws. A couple spots. But basically excellent. Opening it up. Here's the uh, basic unit. We have our counter, our output selector for mute, stereo, or mono, volume for the left channel, tone for the left channel, our power speed selector, one and seven eighths, three and three quarters, or seven and a half. The 1000B that came out quite a bit after this, maybe several months, did not have the 1 and 7 eighths inch speed. Here we have our function buttons. Record left, stop, record right, rewind, play, and fast forward. On our tape head cover here, looks like someone laid a microphone or maybe the power cord in here for a long time because it did get some burns. interesting in here I found this is inspected by H. Patakuski or somebody on July 29th 1965 so I know how old it is. Over here we have our right channel tone and volume controls, a pause switch, our input selector, microphone, our radio line level inputs and a mic radio mixing control. Our VU meter level meters left and right, those are only active in recording, not in playback. 
And if you look real sharply at the pictures in the catalog, you'll notice that these, this, and that are white. I noticed that was an artist representation, not a real photograph, so sometime between the time they planned and the time they went into production, they decided to make these black, which I think is a better idea. On both the right and the left side, we have the internal speakers, four by six inches. And the little doors are open that deflects the sound toward the front. It says stereo sound. Around the back, we have our power outlet. When I bought this at the estate sale, there was no power cord with it. I had to hope I had one that fit, and I did. Under that we have speaker outputs right and left and under that we have monitor or headphone phono jacks. So a little uh, access for four of the tubes, of the seven tubes. Let some of the heat out I guess. And here's our microphone right and left inputs and our line level inputs marked radio, but you can also use phono and other things for that. And here's the specifics. Made in Japan, I'm not sure who by. Here's a look at four of the seven tubes from the back. Don't know if we'll be able to see those light up. A few minutes ago, I took the Zune and put those into the radio jacks in the back and made a little recording of a copyright free song. For this next test, we're going to use an old Concord microphone plugged into the right jack. We're going to set this to mute. Speed on 7.5. We're going to start with our volume here, then we'll watch the uh, meter and see what happens. And have our setting to mic. And we'll give this a try. All right, I'm speaking now into the uh, Concord microphone. We're getting some meter deflection there. Maybe I'll just up it just a little bit and see what happens. Hopefully you can see that. I really like this tape recorder. I'm thinking about making it a permanent part of my display. It's a beautiful cabinet. Probably go somewhere, uh, maybe next to my Norelco receiver from 1968. As a matter of fact, I might try hooking it up to it since I don't have a Norelco reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. But let's rewind this and see what happens. speaking now into the uh, Concord microphone. We're getting some meter deflection there. Maybe I'll just up it just a little bit and see what happens. Hopefully you can see that. I really like this tape recorder. I'm thinking about making it a permanent part of my display. It's a beautiful cabinet. Probably go somewhere uh, maybe next to my Norelco receiver from 1968. 
As a matter of fact, I might try hooking it up to it since I don't have a Norelco reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. But let's rewind this and see what happens. In this video, I've been focusing on the seven and a half inch speed, but of course there's others. We can go to one and seven eighths inch, which is very slow. You turn it off. Then you can go to the three and three quarters. A little faster. Turn it off. Finally, the seven and a half, which we've seen. So I don't see myself using those other two speeds for anything really. Um, and I wanted to keep the video short so I'm not going to show a lot of recording on it. But, just as a demonstration. But concerning the speeds, one thing I've noticed is sometimes I get erratic speeds. So I do have the maintenance SAMs for this. And I'm wondering if along with the lubrication for the occasional squeak I get that I might need uh, to change the motor capacitors because I do get some irregular speeds sometimes. That's interesting in this manual here it talks about add a track record and sound on sound. Maybe we'll try that. If you're a uh, tube kind of person there's the uh, tubes that are in the chassis. So it will need some maintenance as time goes by. Try and make it better. All right, for this um, mic radio mix test, we'll have the zoom plugged into the right channel and the mic plugged into the left channel. We're on mic radio mix. And we'll uh, give it a go and see if we got anything. The zoom doesn't seem to peg that right meter, I notice, when we're doing the mic radio. Although it does when we're just doing the stereo recording. I can see reading the instructions how the add a track and sound on sound would be of advantage to maybe a recording person, but for my purposes here, I think the mic radio mix does everything we need and much simpler. So let's stop this, play it back, and see if we got anything. enjoyed seeing the Criterion 1000 from Lafayette Radio Electronics made in 1965. I've certainly enjoyed showing it to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.